We've been watching the impact of COVID on our hospitals very carefully, and we believe we need to bring back measures that we know have worked throughout the, uh, the pandemic in the past. So starting at 8 a.m. tomorrow, Saturday, September 4th, masks will again be mandatory in all indoor public spaces and workplaces here in Alberta. For workplaces, that means that employees must mask for all indoor settings except for workstations or where two meter physical distancing or adequate physical barriers are in place. This also means that masking on public transit will remain in effect until further notice. Masking in acute and continuing care was previously extended, so let me remind you that we must continue our masks at any of those facilities. Now, regarding schools, school boards will continue to set COVID management policies as they deem appropriate. The provincial mask mandate will not need to apply to schools. Masks will help slow the spread of the virus and the impact on the health system, and this is a step that we can take with minimal disruption of businesses and people's normal activities. We're also requiring all licensed establishments to stop alcohol sales by 10 p.m. So this includes all restaurants, cafes, bars, nightclubs, as well as pubs. They re can remain open past 10 p.m., but without liquor service. I um, brought forward a list of recommendations to Cabinet Committee, uh, which I felt were my best attempt to balance measures that would have a reasonable likelihood of effectiveness with the current situation and at the same time um, consider the unintended consequences of restrictive measures. It's never possible to predict with 100% certainty what the outcomes will be, but the, the list of measures that I brought forward I believed were a reasonable um, balance of those two goals. We must still remember that every Albertan child younger than 12 years has not had the chance to receive vaccine yet. And as students return to school this week, I know this fact is top of mind for many parents. I would like to reassure Albertans that children still have very low rates of severe illness compared to other health risks. Since July 1st, we have not had any hospital admissions for COVID in those between the ages of 5 and 11, and hospitalization rates for children with Delta infections have not increased beyond what was previously seen with other variants. To give some context on the risks of COVID for children, there is a chart in the modeling and data summary online that shows the difference in population risks of hospitalization for kids under 12 over the course of one year. The risks of hospitalization for influenza and RSV for young children in a pre-COVID year is similar to what we saw for population risk of COVID last year in children under 12. In addition, there are other risks that are much more substantial for our children, such as injuries, which also need our attention and consideration. The point of this comparison is not to say that hospitalization of a child for any reason should be ignored but rather that we need to consider all risks our children face, as well as the risks of interventions that may be put in place as we make decisions about our children. What we can do to protect our children against COVID-19 is to make every effort to have all adults and older children around them have both doses of vaccine. Having widespread COVID-19 vaccine uptake and protection is the one way we will be able to live with COVID without unsustainable, restrictive measures.